Hello, Alva. A very good evening and a warm welcome to News at 10, our last news bulletin for the day. Thanks for staying tuned to us here on TV3. My name is Pa Krisiasari. Coming up in the next 30 minutes. Aggrieved residents of Ibuakwa in the Ashanti region have protested over the stalled Sofalina Ibuakwa road project as well as other deplorable roads in the Itiwa Nwabeja municipality dubbed Enough is Enough. The protesters say they cannot be taken for granted by the ruling New Patriotic Party for voting the party to solve their problems. Also tonight, government has warned against the ridiculing of information put out on the alleged plot to take over governance targeted at the presidency. Well, at a news conference, Deputy Information Minister Pius Enam Hajide stressed that government came to that conclusion after more than a year's investigation and surveillance. The Ghana National Association of Teachers has charged the Controller and Accountant General's Department to pay all arrears owed teachers before the end of November. The association made this call at the launch of the NATS Week and National Teachers Day held in Accra. Still ahead in our headline stories tonight, an Accra High Court has dismissed an application by lawyers of the Central Bank seeking the court to strike out Unicredit's case, challenging the Central Bank's letter, revoking its operational license. A judicial review was, failed, was filed by Unicredit after the Bank of Ghana revoked its license, asking the court to quash the decision of the Bank of Ghana. Well, that's all for our local news headlines. Let's find out what's happening on the international front today. And the body of Robert Mugabe will be buried in his hometown following a final twist in a row over the former Zimbabwean leader's resting place where the government had resisted his family's wish for him to be buried in his home region of Vimba, deciding that he should lay in Hero's Acre, a national monument and burial ground. Also tonight, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has said Tehran can discuss other issues with the United States, providing the 2015 nuclear deal with six powers is fully implemented. Rouhani, however, added that Tehran's missile capabilities were not negotiable. The acting director of National Intelligence, Joseph Maguire, in a tense testimony Thursday on Capitol Hill, defended his handling of the explosive whistleblower complaint. The complaint had alleged President Trump pressured the Ukrainian president to investigate the Biden family uh, while calling the issue unprecedented. Well, that's all for our international news headlines. We'll start off with a big one. Much for joining us here on News at 10. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. Now, Gavin has warned against the ridiculing of the information put out on the alleged plot to take over governance targeted at the presidency. At a news conference, Deputy Information Minister Pius Enam Hajide stressed that government came to that conclusion after more than a year's investigation and surveillance. We want to discourage uh, strongly attempts by sections uh, of uh, our population, especially on social media and even sometimes uh, in traditional media by uh, acclaimed, uh, I mean self-acclaimed uh, security and intelligence experts to attempt to ridicule what information the government has put out. Uh, this is a result 
of sustained surveillance. And it is indeed true that the, the X-ray container at the Citadel Hospital belonging to Dr. McPam uh, had been turned into a weapons manufacturing uh, uh, facility. Uh, several uh, improvised explosive devices were manufactured there. It is true uh, that uh, chemicals were purchased from the Kolebu Teaching Hospital for the manufacture of these devices. These devices. It is true that uh, Mr. McPam made contact uh, with a gentleman who works at the base workshop at the Burma camp, offered him money to uh, supply 10 AK-47 rifles. It is true that there is a plan uh, which indicates strategic uh, installations and facilities that were to be targeted at the H hour. Uh, and it is also true that there was a test firing of the weapons that were produced uh, at uh, these uh, makeshift, if you may, uh, arms manufacturing facility that we describe. It is unfortunate that uh, sections of the Ghanaian public will attempt to ridicule this information. And we all know, history reminds us, that the assassination of the former president of the United States of America, John F. Kennedy, took a bullet. Uh, just one person with, uh, with a gun was arrested. Uh, the security uh, agencies, after having convinced themselves that there was clear and present danger, especially after the firepower that was manufactured was successfully tested, the security experts came to the conclusion that there was a clear and present danger and went ahead to arrest these persons. I think that the attempt uh, from some quarters to, ridic to ridicule this is rather unfortunate uh, and should, be, should not be encouraged. All right, so here, Deputy Information Minister Pels Enam Hajide at that press conference, essentially explaining uh, the whole circumstance. Uh, we've just been joined in the studio by Adib Sani, who is the Executive Director of the Jatike Center for Human Security and Peace Building. Uh, he's going to help us do some analysis on this issue. So how do you react to the Minister's press conference today? Essentially, what he's saying is that lots of you people uh, have been, uh, you know, essentially uh, ridiculing uh, government investigation into this matter. What do you say to that? Well, in the first place, I mean, I, I don't need Haji uh, to uh, uh, tell me or any of my colleagues that we are self-acclaimed. You see, the funny thing about politicians sometimes is when you don't toe their line, then they seek all sorts of, you know, descriptions to perhaps discredit you. The fact still remains, rather, the Ministry of Information made a mockery of government, okay, by issuing that statement in the first place. Ghanaians are now discerning. You don't expect that you bring out an information and force it down the throats of the people. They are now able to read between the lines. They are able to dissect and multisect some of these issues. And if it doesn't just make sense, what do you expect them to what do? What are you suggesting? So, these are, you know, people in government who have a lot of state power and authority. And as we've been told, security has been on this matter for the past one and a half years. Well, we cannot run away from the fact that this is a serious issue. Mm. It is a serious issue because for anyone to allegedly want to subvert the security of the state is something we shouldn't uh, take lightly. However, like I indicated, the work of the Ministry of Information is not just to inform but to strategically communicate. Mm. And it's not always necessary that you give a commentary of issues, especially when it's pertaining to national interest. Mm. I must indicate, I've been through the document, I have studied the document, and when you look at it factually, it doesn't really merit what is rather actually. What's your on difficulty? The is it with the information flow? Or it's essential about the fact that you just doubt what government has put out. It's the information flow. Mm. As a matter of fact, I have always contended that in 
crisis situation, information management is very key. Mm. Unfortunately, we have been unable to package the information well, so it, it satisfies the Ghanaian population at the same time doesn't compromise the investigation regime because what has happened has the potential of compromising the whole investigation. Uh, what if it went beyond the three persons? Mm. What if there are a lot of co-conspirators all told across today the country that it is possible other people could be added to? You know, it, but, but they claim also it's still under investigation. So if you are still investigating, why did you have to come out with this information? What if the weapons we have seen it goes way beyond that? Because coup is serious business, and we know that. I mean, this is not how coups are organized. But going by the information, okay, we are given is very different from what we currently have on the ground. That is where I have issues with. Mm. I am not seeking to discredit. I mean, government's position on this, mm. but the communication has always been a bit of a but, but you mentioned that government was uh, essentially trying to force information down the throats of the people. That is essentially saying that, you know, they are trying to uh, put out news where there is no news. Well, you don't expect the government to issue statements and we just take it in just like that. Of course, we have studied extensively. We have experienced, uh, we, we have experience in security management. We do understand uh, what goes into organizations of coup, even though I have personally not been part of any coup before. It involves the governization of enormous resources, okay? That would include cash of weapons, that would include expertise, that would include uh, 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 infiltration of uh, the military, of uh, the police, especially even elite units. That would also involve the infiltration of not just the media, but even so civil society. Mm -hmm. And it's also likely to succeed if um, there's an international, I mean, if a foreign backer Okay, but when you look at all this and when you take into consideration uh, how far we've come as a democracy, um, the solid institutions we have, um, our values, uh, the, the robustness of the civil society organizational environment in Ghana, it makes us virtually could prove. Mm. However, like I always indicate, there's no room for complacency. Mm. It is important you touch base with the people and you manage effectively the security of the state. Mm. However, it is always very important that the kind of, we do some introspection, we exercise some level of circumspection in the kind of information we bring out there to the public domain. This is not the first time. You remember some uh, few months uh, ago, we had some people who were uh, arrested at Qatar Hostel for allegedly engaging in terror plots and all that. Immediately their pictures was all over the place with the hand grenades. Information management has always been poor. See right. what has happened with mm. the Takura de Girls. Mm. It's all as a result of information management. Right. So Adib, I'm, I'm going to say a big right. thank you to you. Thank you very much for your time. Adib Sani is a security analyst with the Jatike uh, Institute. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll return with some more stories here on News at 10. Right, welcome back to News at 10 live from Adesawa here in Kanda Accra. Now, renowned architect David Ajayi has refuted claims he is not certified to work in Ghana. His company, Ajayi and Associates, drew public criticism when news broke that he was to construct a new 400-seater parliamentary chamber and other major architectural projects in the country. While well, following news of the alleged contract handed to Mr. Jai and Associates, a consortium of Ghanaian architects petitioned President Akufuadu to review the decision. But speaking on 3FM Sunrise Morning Show, Mr. Jai said he was shocked to hear he was not certified to work in Ghana. I, I was utterly shocked by those uh, statements. Uh, they were pure fabrication. We there's no way as somebody of my level, why would I come to Ghana this and not be registered? FM. I'm a professional. I work globally professionally. I, I work with licenses in every jurisdiction that I work in the world. Why would I not do that when I came to Ghana? It was the first thing we did when we came to Ghana, when we thought that there was a possibility of even working here. We registered with the GIA. We are registered with the Architects Registration Board. We made sure that all those things were absolutely clear. I'm also you know, a Ghanaian. So I never gave up my passport. I'm a dual citizen. I have okay. a British passport, but I never gave up my, my Ghanaian passport. So the need for somehow partnering with a Ghanaian architect has never been an issue because I'm actually a Ghanaian. So I've registered and trained as, a, as an architect who can practice in Ghana. So this question is very mute and anybody who knows my history would understand that. So I was very shocked that this was a, an accusation. 
But the Honorary Secretary of the Ghana Institute of Architects, Augustus Richardson, says although he started the processes of registration with the council, that process is yet to be completed. He spoke on News 360. The Architects which, Act 1969, which is what you ask, uh, establishes how a person should be uh, registered in the institute. If you read 10 of NLCD 357, Architects Act 1969, it says that subject to Section 11, a person is entitled to be registered as an architect on payment of a prescribed fee mm -hmm. if that person is the member of the Institute of Architects. To be a Ghanaian architect, you have to register here as a Ghanaian. Like, if you want to work here on a number of projects, as many projects so, as you so want to work on. So, you're saying said David Ajayi is not registered? No, he's not. Uh, letters okay. uh, that I have will prove that he's not registered. Look, you have to register two things. You have to register your firm, and you have to register yourself as an individual. Okay. He started a process to do it for himself. That process was uh, given the respect by the Institute. Okay. He made an application for his firm. As we sit right now, there's a register that was published on April 15th, that uh, paper, um, you know, the mm -hmm. daily graphic. If you check that register, his name is not in there as a member, but his firm is on there on the temporary register. He has implications. Yes, he started the process. The Institute uh, gave him all the courtesies uh, to try and move the process forward. It was simply left for him to make certain payments. We have no record of those payments. Indeed, we also followed up uh, with his office to find out if the payments were, were made. We have been informed that the payments were made electronically. We asked for proof of that uh, payment. We haven't received it as yet. Again, he went on, sorry, he went on to, you know, inform us that uh, the Architects Registration Council, if you remember, mm -hmm. and all of this is tied, the Registration Council in this country didn't have a board. I'm happy to inform you mm -hmm. that because of our actions and some of these things that we said, the board has been established as of 25th July and has had two meetings as at now. It's trying to straighten out all of it. The law of this country says that if you are not registered as an architect, you cannot practice as an architect. Unless, of course, our laws are a joke, and I doubt our laws are a joke. Okay. We need to ensure that the right thing is done. That's what we are following. Unfortunately, I find that sad comments are raised about, you know, Ghanaian architects being mm. envious and all that. And that's I, what I, don't I, think, I, I don't think that anybody is envious of Sadiq mm -hmm. at all. When he came in, and I'm just using the example of the past council, I'm new right. council. The past council okay. respected him. Generally, you are supposed to write a, an exam of license because of what he's been able to achieve globally, we didn't let him write that exam. I we see. respected it. So when a lot is said about we not wanting him to be a member, it, it, it is not the case. All right, my so watching news at 10 live from our studios here at Adesa Winkanda. We're going to go for a short break. We'll return with some more stories. Welcome back to News at 10. Now, founder of defunct Capital Bank, William Atuasian, has alleged Finance Minister Ken Oferreta and Board Chairman of Enterprise Group, Kelly Gajakpo, approached him in 2016 with a proposal to buy the bank. Now, speaking to Paula Dumotri on Good Evening Ghana, he noted the narrative surrounding the status of the bank after it was put into administration has changed significantly and it was time for him to speak out. So you didn't chop the money at Capital Bank? I never chop a dime, Paul. Paul, what is the point in our funds? What is it? It is my baby. That makes sense. It's your bank. It's my bank. I gave back to the bank. Well, but they say people set up a bank and rob it. Yeah, but how can you do that? If people do it, looking at where I have come from, mm. migrated from an unregulated institution to a regulated space, and now to a universal bank, why would I want to do that? Paul? Mm. I was also being insulted. And that was when I got amazed how narrative can be turned and twisted. I have sued. Oh, you have? I have. Oh, I see. I, I have know. sued the Bank of Ghana. But you're a Christian, you don't want to forgive? I have forgiven. But my property must be protected. Mm. My property must be protected under the Property Protection Act. Mm. We are property owning democracy. Mm -hmm. Hard work must be rewarded. If the bank was that bad, our current finance minister, Honorable Ken Oforiata, to care that with the chief executive of Enterprise Group, were in my office. Kelly Gadjeko. Kelly Gadjeko. To, to do say, what? We are interested to buy Capital Bank. No, no, hold on. Ken Oforiata, the finance minister. Yes. And Kelly Gadjeko, the, yes. the, his, his yes. partner, Data Bank, yes. and Enterprise, yes. came to see you. Yes. This is when Ken was finance minister. No, before he became finance minister. Okay. That's right. They came to you yes. that they wanted to buy your bank. Buy the bank. If it was that stressful, would they have done that? So this that? was here? This was 2016. The Ghana National Association of Teachers has charged the Control and Accountant General's Department to pay all arrears owed teachers before the end of November. The association made this call at the launch of the NAT Week and National Teachers Day held in Accra. 
Well, Teachers' Day celebration is to bring attention to the concerns of the professional body. The theme for the celebration, Young Teachers, the Future of the Profession. The president of NAT, Philip Palasin, commended the president for intervening to stop the implementation of the human resource management system. However, she called on the controller and accountant general to pay all categories of arrears by the end of November. The NAT therefore calls on the controller and accountant general's department and the Ghana Education Service to ensure that the categories of arrears all teachers are paid before the end of November 2019. We further urge the GDS to expedite action in solving the several challenges that arose out of the implementation of the HRMIS in order not to resurrect any future labor unrest in the education sector. NAT, as part of the celebration of the World Teachers Day, assists 50 needy school children in the host region with school uniforms, bags, textbooks and stationeries. Well, that's how we conclude news at 10. It came to you live from our studios here at Adesawa in Kandakra. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Park Kusia Sari. For more news, you can log on to our website, www3news.com.